Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have case number one. We're trying to find the solution here for the differential equation in terms of when L is equal to zero and M sub L is equal to zero. But in other words, we're trying to find the solution for the theta function in this particular case. And we can see, of course, on the board that it's going to be one over the square root of two. How do we get that? Well, first of all, we're going to go back to realizing that um, we made some substitutions. We let x equal the cosine of theta in such a way that our new function f of x equals f of cosine of theta, which is equal or the substitution of the theta function, which is a function of theta. Now, we realized that the solution f of x was going to be equal to one. Now, that's the specific solution for not having it normalized, so in order to, to find the correct solution when we normalize it, instead of using 1, we're going to set it equal to a, then we're going to normalize the function to find the proper value for a. We know it's going to be a constant. Also, we have to realize that the limits of integration, since we're doing the, the zenith direction, we normally would integrate from pi over 2 to negative pi over 2, but instead we're going to integrate from 0 to pi over 2 and double the integration to go over the entire angle or distance that we can go of 180 degrees. So that means that if we take the limits of integration for the theta function and we go from theta equals 0 to theta equals theta over 2, since we now have a differential equation that we solved using the Legendre polynomials, well, we have none that yet, we'll do that later, but we know that we're going to need different, um, uh, different uh, limits of integration. So when theta equals 0, the cosine of theta equals 1, and when theta equals pi over 2, the cosine of theta equals 0. And since the cosine of theta was substituted for x, we're then going to have x limits from 0 to 1. All right, so if our function f of x is equal to a, that means that theta, the theta function, also has to equal a. Now, how do we know that? Well, because when we go back and forth between the theta function and the f function, we only need to change whenever we have a cosine of theta. For every cosine of theta, or for every x, we replace it by cosine of theta. But since there's no x in the solution of our differential equation in this particular case, the case where l is equal to 0 and m sub l is equal to 0, we can make a stray substitution. That means that a, as a solution to the function f, is also going to be the solution to the function theta only in that case, we're doing case one. So now we're going to have to normalize that to find the value for a. So what we can say is that one is equal to two times the integral from zero to pi over two, because we're only doing half the distance, so we have to double the integral, of the function squared times d theta. So that's what would, would do it in the particular format like that, but now we're going to change that to the f function. So this is equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 instead of 0 to pi over 2, we now use limits from 0 to 1, of the f function squared times dx. And of course in this case the f function is going to be a, just a constant, so we know that 1 is equal to, oh, I forgot my 2, can't forget my 2, 2 times a squared times the integral from 0 to 1 of dx. Of course, that's a very easy integral to do. So this is equal to 2a squared x evaluated from 0 to 1. When you plug in the lower limit, you get 0. Plug in the upper limit, you get 1. So this is equal to 2a squared. From that, we can say that a squared is equal to 1 divided by 2. And therefore, we could say that a is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2. And since the solution to this differential equations for the case where L is equal to zero and M sub L is equal to zero, for the middle function, the theta function, which gives us the zenith direction of the motion of the electron in the hydrogen atom, which is the middle portion of the solution to the Schrodinger equation of the hydrogen atom, we could then say that that solution will give us a equals one over the square root of two. With other words, the function equals one over the square root of two in this particular case. And that's exactly where that came from. And this is how it's done.